here, may inside of the Chang'an Alps. We we'll start with the exterior. Okay, it's actually a nice looking uh, subcompact sedan. For what it is, looks actually sharp for me. Also in this nice blue color. And yes, like every other Chang'an, apart from the CS95 right beside me, watch the review of that by the way. Link of that will be in the description down below, along with the CS75. Getting segwayed a bit. So the grill of this went back with the Lexus style spindle grill. This one's proportionally right. It's not like the CS75 is just so big on the SUV, but they both work in their own way. But this one on a sedan, the spindle grill, perfect. Also, you have a nice front bumper design. I assume ground cleanse is around 135-140 millimeters. On par with the competition, not the highest, but you won't ground out. You have LED DRS, projector headlights. Not much to talk about to the exterior, really. The rear looks plain, but it's alright. And then side mirrors look sleek at least. And then there are two noticeable character lines on the rear door. It's not like a Mazda where there are two character lines and they just smoothly vanish. This one's a noticeable character line. But it's still aggressive to look at, I must say. So not much chrome on the exterior. And then boot space may not be the biggest in class, but it's 382 liters of space. As you can see, my bags just fit alright. So I'll give that a pass, it's fine. And then, yeah, that's all about it in the exterior. I'll show you where I am in the interior. Pretty standard, pretty. Now, plastics here and there, but for its price point, I'll get to that in a bit. I completely forgive it. Plastic here, there. But this one, at least for your door handle, it is soft touch. And then, you have speaker setups on both sides, as well as cubby spaces and bottle holders. A one liter bottle will fit here just fine. Very easy to get in and out. There's a very weird cubby space here. It's for your coins, but it's too far to reach out, to be honest. Maybe it's just my driving position. No, 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 no. It's really too far to reach in. Anyway, there's one more here beside the air conditioning vent. Nice texture, by the way, with that dashboard. Yeah, it's plastic here and there. And there's even a fake edge stitching here, but that's fine. I forgive it. Left side, simple controls for your adjustments for your side mirrors, your auto start, stop function button here. Okay, I didn't know this had it. Then two blank buttons here and then adjustments for your auto leveling headlamps, steering wheel, nice to the touch. This girthy but it's not like harder than like the CS75 and CS95. This one's soft. I like the steering feel already and I'm just moving it ever so slightly. It feels so light already. I can't wait to drive this. Every channel I've driven so far, flat bottom steering wheel but this one, the black part is not gloss black and the silver trim is not overlapping the bottom so it's still nice to the touch when you touch it from the bottom. Simple controls here and there. And then you have an analog speedometer here. And then you're flanked by two monochromatic displays. For the left side, you have your RPM display. You only have a few adjustments there. And then for the right side, your odometer, what gear you're in. And then for your door sensor and the fuel level as well. And then here in the center console, I want demo the infotainment because for some reason, Chang'an Philippines disconnected the infotainment for this. So I won't be able to demo anything. Not even the reverse cam works. So anyway, apologies for that. Center console, okay, pretty standard as well. Plastic here and there, gloss black. Actually, easy to understand with the buttons for the climate control. But for the volume nut, this is actually a nice touch. There's a blue part here surrounded by silver trim. Actually, it gives it a bit flair with the center console at least. And on the passenger side, there's another weird cubby hole here. And then glove box. Okay, pretty decent. And then here below, you have one USB port, one 12 volt socket, cubby space. Won't fit my phone. Yeah, it will might it might fly out, but it will be protected by the gear lever. And then gear lever surrounding that gloss back. Okay, gloss back is kept to a minimum at least it's fine. You have a manual handbrake here. Then two cup holders. They will not fit a one liter bottle sadly. Oh wait, no, they, they kind of do, but there, now it fits. And then above here, you have your lights, and as I said, for the sunroof, visor, you only have a ticket to give an extend, but okay, so so the visor, it's thick enough, nice material as well. And then center console box, pretty thin, but enough for a phone. Also seats, leather mixed with fabric. I mean, they're really soft, there's good lumbar support. It's no sporty seat, but it will hold you up pretty well. So yeah, that's about it here in the front. I'll show you the back. So here in the back of the Chang'an Alswin, okay, pretty spacious as well. My feet room, knee room, excellent, and then headroom, as you can see. 
free alright as well not much toys here in the back later you only have two isofix anchor points and then bottle holder and small cabin spaces on each side same material with the door here and there soft pad here where your shoulders should be so that's fine no map pockets as well and there's one weird cubby space here in the back and also what's nice so I space sit here in the middle okay it's just a little bit more comfortable not to sit here in the middle okay my headroom just a bit eaten up but it's fine but there's actually a nice slope here so you can have more headroom here for taller people like above 5'8 and so on transmission tunnel is not that highway uh, well you can just drag your feet on top of it so sitting in the middle is no issues whatsoever yeah that's it so uh talk about the engine so powering this chang and alswin is a one and a half liter natural aspirated four cylinder engine that produces 106 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque so that's pretty powerful in its class i think that's the same as a 1.5 liter vios and this is the other party trick of this chang and alswin it is the only one in its class that has a dual clutch transmission and this is mated to a five speed dual clutch transmission so let's see how this performs so with that let's go for a drive so driving the Chang'an Alswin Platinum. This is the top of the line model by the way of the Alswin lineup. And first impressions immediately I can tell the string is so freaking light. Like really super light. And yeah the dual clutch is surprisingly not jerky. Like yes it's the only one, the only DCT in its class. So I expect to be a bit jerky sometimes but not this one. Okay just a little bit delayed. There's only two driving modes. I mean, there's just pull and drive and then just flick to the right to manual mode. That's your sport mode. And then over humps. Okay, it's cool. okay, it's a bit comfortable. Ah, okay, just a little bit jerky if you saw that. Just ever so slightly jerk, but it's not too bad, I must say. Then going over humps and bumps, surprisingly not too bad. The ground clearance is, might, may, may not be the highest, but it's alright. You won't ground out. Gearing, yes, it's only a five speed. Despite being a DCT, the gearing is quite long. And then going over here, rough patches. Okay, there's tire noise, but at its price point, I'll get to that also in a bit. I forgive it. If this is only meant to be like to be a point A to B car, there are little flaws here and there, but I'm willing to forgive it. The DCT is not bad. I don't mind the long gearing, but. I can say the driving dynamics, it's preppy. I take a DCT, to be honest, as I said before, over CVTs any day. Like, doesn't have the rubber band effect. I can say that with this transmission of the Alvin. It's delayed, but surprisingly preppy. And yes, 106 horsepower, that's already as powerful as the, the big daddy of the segment, the Vios. I know that's like the same or one horsepower less. I think it's just the same. I can say... This is just slight, ever so slightly better than them. Although what I always benchmark in the subcompact sedan category, besides VS, of course, that's number one. But the other three I reviewed on the CT, GDM Grand, and my ever favorite Nissan Almera. The steering wheel, I think this is also among the lightest in class. So if this is gonna be a first car, by the way, yeah, this is dead easy to drive. Like. I mean, the, look, look how much it's darting. <laughs> That's how light this steering wheel is. And also, I'm just driving around 40k pace. Yes, there is tire noise. And VH is a little bit meh, to be honest. It does the job at least. It doesn't at least feel like lightly built as like a... As some of the Chinese, other Chinese brands I've tried. There's actually one I really don't like all of a sudden because how poor the build quality was. But let's be fair, I won't mention the brand. Okay. I noticed something immediately. Okay, just to go over a hump first. But I did not expect this with this Alswin. That being the trait of dual clutch transmissions, I shifted immediately to the right manual mode. I'm just just traveling around 30, 40 kilometers per hour. It's already in the fifth gear. It hunts for the highest gear immediately to save as much fuel as possible. But I mean, it's doing a good job. So far, I've been averaging 14.8 liters per 100 kilometers. I mean, that's pretty fuel efficient for what this is. I think that's also on par with the competition. And suspension, okay, over smooth pavement so far. I'll get to Edsa in a bit. It's a bit bouncy, like here over hump. But like the CS75, it's so comfortable. And then, yes, 
the DCT is not as bad as you expect. I mean, in terms of the jerkiness, do proper throttle input, you'll be fine. You just don't mash the throttle all of a sudden. That's how the DCT works. You just have to do it smoothly as possible. So I assume, I've not even tried manual mode yet by the way, so I assume over twisties this will be a fun car to drive. Also, since I was able to demo the infotainment, if you notice, on the left side of the side mirror, there is no camera underneath, but on the right side, there is. So this corning camera is only applicable for the right side, which is a bit weird, but... And again, it's the only one in its class it has it. At least there's one side that works. Also, I noticed a funny thing with that DCT. I stop from a stoplight. The moment I shift to the right, it's... It's already on 5th gear for some reason. I'm not sure if that's just a glitch or something. I don't know. And body lane, yeah, there is, but it's not too much. It's fine. It's not uh, meant to be a sporty sedan. It's not as good as uh, Honda City. Let's be honest with that. That's the most sporty one still in its class. But the power though, yeah, not also the most powerful, but it's up there. Like the likes of the M Grand. I know this is more powerful than an M Grand already. Going over hump pretty fast. Okay, it was hooked up pretty well. Oh. oh, wow. Yeah, the gearing is long, way longer than the CS95 since the one is has five gears, but the shift time is amazing. Oh, wow, like it's instant. Like the moment, look, I shift down now, already in second gear. That's what's nice with these cities. They're so fast to ship. Oh yeah, there's one thing I haven't tried yet. Second gear. Yeah, it will, I'm trying to make it shift up automatically, but it won't. That's how long the gearing is, sadly. But wow, this is peppy. I didn't expect this. Among the driving dynamics of the sub-compact category sedans, this is up there. I mean, it's also pretty light on its feet. And again, the only do clutch transmission in its class. This is a fun car to drive, surprisingly. Yes, there are flaws here and there. But now, for its price, 738,000 pesos. For a top of the line, a compact sedan that's this powerful and has all most of the amenities you already need. I say this Chang'an Alsin is a steal. For what you get, yes, as I said again, flaws here and there, but for its price point, I forgive every single thing. I'm surprised Chang'ans are so underrated, to be honest. Oh yeah, that's, since we're in Hedza now, yeah, look at the tire, nice. But still comfortable though, surprisingly, okay. Try to shift down a gear, come on, shift down, it's, it's too long. Okay, it's still automatically up, she's finally. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's my biggest complaint with this Alspin. But it's no deal breaker. The gearing is just too long. If there was an extra gear, this would have been wonder to drive. Yeah, here, look. Already a rough patch of edge, unlike the CS75, CS95, it is present. Noticeably present. But I'm willing to forgive it for 738,000 pesos. It has, as I said again, all the amenities you need. It's surprisingly fun to drive. And you have a dual clutch transmission as well. So, that concludes my review of the Chang'an. This is the last one, don't worry. <laughs> I've reviewed. If you want to see more reviews from Chang'an Show, the link of that will be in the description down below. So, I want to thank Chang'an Show and Sir Donald for allowing me to review. So, hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more future car reviews. Hopefully a CS35 plus soon, hopefully.